So when I make candles, I have a, I take a different approach um, than uh, most potters. I do very little pulling. I let them um, dry while they're laying out rather than trying to curve them to, to bend them into shape. Um, and what I like to do is let things, I like to pull handles uh, one day and then, and then let them sit overnight and then put everything on either the next day or the day after. So timing's really important with this uh, part of the process in my studio practice. And you know, I, I really have to time it so that I have enough time to pull the handles, then the next day I have enough time to put, put them on the cups. They can't sit too much longer than that. Um, so the approach that I take is uh, I start with a coil and I'll just rip some clay off here and just by sort of squeezing and turning, you know, I'll make the coil. And I find that this works really well to, to get it to um, close to the scale that I want it to rather than trying to roll it really thin from a, a large coil. What happens is it, it tends to start to get square as you're rolling it. And, you know, when I roll this out, I don't, I don't use a lot of pressure. I'm just very gently moving my hands back and forth um, on the surface just to get rid of any of the of the divots on there. A little bit of water will definitely help. Um, it doesn't need to get too saturated. And you know what's nice about this is you can get, uh, if, you're, if you want to make uh, handles that are consistent from one to the next to the next, this will help because you're sort of setting up a method where everything's the same thickness. But um, I'm just going to start by taking my fettling knife here and cutting the end off and then cutting uh, in you know about an inch and a half to two inches and then from here I will roll this and taper it into the center even more and what this does is it it forms a handle that is thick on the ends and then tapered in the center without doing a lot of like pulling and finessing to try to you know get it that way it's already sort of built into the the structure of the object so just a little bit more water down onto the table. And uh, when, I'm, when I do this technique, I like having a, a spot that's sort of damp where the um, canvas has been sprayed with water and then an area where it's dry, but clean of any, any debris. And then so I'll just throw this down and let gravity do the work. And then come over to a spot where it's a little more dry to finish up. After a while, it's, it likes to start to stick to, the, to where it's wet. I'm going to take a somewhat damp sponge and just uh, compress that handle down a little bit. Um, and what this does is it allows you to um, get like a really nice line on the edge. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of water and, and just get this a little bit wet and just pull very minimally just to stretch it out enough. And then back down onto the table. And it's important that you put it down on a dry area after you've pulled it. Um, I really like working with canvas when I use this technique because uh, it just, it, it comes off so easily. Um, if you try this on plaster, it will be a disaster. So. And so the nice thing about this technique is that you can taper your handles in a variety of different ways. It can be tapered long ways that way. So this is just more of a, a, a tapered style. And the other nice thing about this is that you can, you know, you can do things like set the handle down and with your two thumbs come in and, and, and pull textures and lines and things like that into the work. And then use your sponge. And handles are really hard, you know, um, because our, our hands are shaped funny and they tend to pull things that are a little bit more organic. So if you're trying to make something that is pulled but a little bit more, has a little more precision to it than and this technique might help a little bit. So I'm going to add the handles to these two cups. And uh, first thing I really like to do is elevate the cup and have it so it's more at an eye level or, or in an area where I can sort of crouch down and, and get an idea of you know, the profile and how far it's sticking off the cup. So just to start, you know, these things generally will sit overnight. And uh, the next day, you know, they're, they're still rigid, but they're, they still have some flexibility to them. So what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of water and just kind of add it just to kind of get some malleability back into the handle. But it's still pretty, it's still pretty flat. And, and what, I, what I like to do is take kind of the worst one of the group, the one that I'm not going to use, and just kind of start, use this as sort of a model for the length of the rest of them. And so if I take this cup here and I can just hold this up and try to get an idea of how and where it's going to come off the form. 
realistically it's probably going to be about this long give or take I'm gonna probably just come on here like that maybe a little bit shorter let's try it a little bit shorter and once I have that I have something to cut most of the you know the rest of my handles too so if I sat down and I made let's say 10 of these or 15 of these and I was you know going through I was being really productive in the studio and um, needed to make all the handles and they're, these are all relatively the same size and I can make all the handles relatively the same so it's it sort of cuts down on time and guesswork so I could take this one and just sort of hold it up and then get an idea of where to cut it and also where to cut it within the form of the handle itself. So, you know, get the skinny part in the center there. So one of the things I'll do is just add a little bit of water, not to the skinny part of the handle where my thumb's pointing, but up here on the top. And that'll just bring some malleability back into the handle so that when I'm bending it, it doesn't crack right there. Now I can bend it flat again. And so there's, there's a couple different things when you're, when you're putting handles on a cup to decide. Um, first of all is is the height from up and down here to here you know where's the handle gonna uh, the top of the handle gonna rest how far is it gonna stick out where is it gonna attach up here where is it gonna attach down there so one of the things that I found is both functionally and visually pleasing is having the handle the top of the handle sort of be in the middle part of the cup and you know so that when you're holding it it's not top heavier if it's um, Place, if the handle's placed lower on the cup, it'll be top heavy. If it's placed higher on the cup, it'll be bottom heavy. This is a great cutting tool. I, the ribs are great for a lot of different things. But, um, and just taking the corners off here and then um, down on the bottom here. And it just gives it, you know, sort of a, a really nice round shape. You don't have to try to cut it and make it all jagged. Um, it just does the work for you. And you know, I mean, that'll relate to sort of the circles and then the and then the circular aspect of the rim. And the next step is uh, to take take my handle and just sort of cut it on a bevel here. And I'm just going to place the fettling knife sort of halfway, and just slowly move it towards me. And then place it flat on the table and just push it down with my thumb. So really, the idea is is to kind of sculpt the handle a little bit before it goes on the pot. And then the same is going to happen on the bottom. I am just going to cut here and then clean that up. Clean up the edges with a sponge. And just keep this kind of wet right in here so that this area is really malleable. Um, you know, when you're first doing handles, uh, it's really nerve wracking because you have this thing, it's flimsy, it starts to get really wobbly on you. Um, you know, the nice thing about this technique is that the, uh, the clay sat up overnight. It's to a consistency where it's not recording fingerprints. And as I'm handling it, it's not getting bent or mashed. And, you know, I can keep adding a little bit of water to prolong its life. Um, so I can just sort of bend this thing into shape and just kind of set it on there and see what it, see what it looks like and just kind of get an idea of how I want it and where exactly I want it and make sure that it's aligned this way and that it's not crooked. And then just as I'm holding it, I'm just going to just slightly get an idea of where to scratch and score on the form so it's not a complete mystery. And now I can come and scratch and score. Now, this is really, 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 really important. Obviously, if you do not scratch and score the surface very well, the handle's going to pop off. And I have students all the time that We'll have their handles pop off and they'll say they scratch and scored and then they, they, they did something very light like this and that just that just doesn't cut it. it has to be really good and deep I mean you can get away with that with the sprigs but not something like this and then I'm going to do the bottom part as well so I'm just going to scratch and score very 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 deeply here and here and get a little bit of slip and put it on there and here and I like you know really thick slip and being very liberal and I'll start at the top and just uh, put this here with my thumb and forefinger forefinger in the interior thumb on the exterior and just press it on just to get it to stick on and then come to the bottom and really what I want to do is two things I want to make sure that this right in here is not cockeyed 
I want to make sure it's straight. And I'll press that on so it is straight. And then you can always move it around a little bit later on. And then I also want to make sure that this is centered and aligned here. The key to a really good handle is not only just getting it on the cup, um, but really playing with the shape and proportion and negative space of the object.